For nearly a century, submarines have patrolled our waters. Some can stay at sea for months at a time, never needing to refuel. On these long patrols, it's only a matter of time before one goes down. This is probably one of the most terrifying scenarios you can get yourself into. So in 1952, engineers pioneered to build the first submarine escape suit. So as the submarine went down, you could have a small chance of escaping through one of the torpedo tubes. But problems arise when the submarine is sinking too fast and it's too deep for you to escape with the escape suit. In addition, it is very unlikely that the submarine would have enough escape suits to fit everyone on board. The solution eventually came with the AS-28 Prids vehicle, invented in 1972, and the DSAR from 1970. The idea is that the submersible would latch onto the sunken submarine, where the crew would climb aboard and be safe and sound. But since their inception in the 1970s, no submersible has been able to rescue the crew of a sunken submarine. Out of the major submarine accidents which happened since 1970, most of them have been able to resurface by themselves or went down taking all hands. So let's review all of those major accidents and see if an escape submersible would have helped or not. Starting with the sinking of the K-8 on the 12th of April 1970. The nuclear-powered November-class submarine was 107 meters long and weighed 4,750 tons when submerged. A fire spread through the air conditioning ducts of the submarine. The nuclear reactors had to be shut down and the submarine sank to the bottom of the sea. Ultimately, the submarine was raised out of the water with all the crew inside it, but as it was being towed in heavy seas, it sank taking with it all hands. 30 years later, on the 12th of August 2000, the Russian Oscar II-class submarine K141 Kursk was sailing in the Barnet Sea. At a length of 154 meters and a displacement of 16,400 tons when submerged, it is one of the largest submarines to have ever patrolled our oceans. It was also fitted with two nuclear reactors and 24 ballistic missiles. But a fire in the weapons room caused by an overheated torpedo caused most of the munitions to explode and the submarine sank to the bottom of the sea. Various rescue attempts were made using the AS-28, but the ill-maintained submersible didn't manage to achieve a lock with the submarine. It had to return to the surface during the 12-hour recharge of its batteries, abandoning the remaining crew. The wreckage of the Kursk was raised out of the ocean in 2001. A properly maintained rescue submersible would have certainly avoided this incident. On the 15th of November 2017, the Argentinian submarine ARA San Juan was on a patrol near the Falkland Islands. With a displacement of 2,264 tons when submerged and 67.3 meters in length, it is quite a small submarine comparing the ones that I've just talked about. For reasons most likely caused by a computing error, the submarine went too deep and got imploded under the extreme pressures. A rescue submersible would not have helped. In 2019, the AS-12 submarine, operated by the Russian Navy, was doing a routine patrol. But another fire started inside the submarine, killing 14. Luckily, the submarine managed to surface. An escape submersible wouldn't have helped, since the submarine managed to get to the surface by itself. Finally, in 2021, the Indonesian submarine KRI Nangala 402 went missing. The wreckage was discovered and it showed that the submarine had imploded because it went too deep. Again, a deep sea submersible would not have helped, even though they did scour the ocean for days and days in search for this submarine. 
The Titan submersible, operated by OceanGate, which went missing on the 18th of June 2023, also imploded Lake 402 and San Juan. Even if it didn't implode, an escape submersible would not have helped, since the Titan was lacking in an escape hatch. So what do you think about escape submersibles? In my opinion, they don't really work. But I would love to be proven wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments below. This has been Head for Science, and I'll see you in the next video.